A very good morning to everyone present here. Welcome to the workshop organized by Computer Society of India (FRCRC) on prototype, process design, and development. Prototyping is essential for any project, be it a startup or a code. Our speaker for this evening is Dr. Am Amit Lokhande. He is an IIC Innovation Ambassador, DBT BI RAC Research Fellow, CS. NRF National Research Fellow and has a PhD in Tech Pharmaceutics from Institute of Chemical Technology. Without further ado, we now begin our session. Over to you, sir. Yeah, hello. Good morning. And thank you, Sakshi, for a nice introduction. So before beginning my session, uh, in general, this virtual platform, we have to ask three questions to the audience. First is, am I audible enough? The first question to you is, am I audible enough? Yes, sir, you're audible. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you. Next is, am I visible to you all in a video? Yes, sir. Okay. And the third thing that I'll do now is, I'll just share my slide. Yes. So is my slides are visible to you all? Okay, yes, thank sir. you so much for confirmation. So yes, everyone, a very good morning and Namaste. I'm Amit Lokhande from ICT Mumbai. I heartily welcome you on this workshop on prototype and process design development. So basically, I will talk in this session about my lessons, what I have learned when I have started my journey as an innovator and struggling to have the product to be, you know, get in a proper format so that the user can use it in a better way and give me a feedback in return how my product is working. So without, uh, you know, uh, this thing, I'll also share one of my experiences with the designing of one of the design or a device which I have developed and how I have, you know, uh, gone through my journey as a student, then to the innovator and how I have started a startup based on the products that I have developed. So before beginning, I would like to, you know, remove certain barriers amongst the student because uh, I also had certain barriers, you know, when we develop a product or when we are starting, you know, working on our ideas, we certainly have certain barriers in our mind. So what are those common barriers? I would just state one by one because this is very essential when I can just, you know, give you the glimpses of how you can proceed further for the prototype development. So the first barrier that comes on each and every one of you is I can't express my idea. Sorry, what has happened? Just a second. I'll just go back. So the first barrier that comes in our mind is I can't express my idea. There are certain barriers, okay? There are certain barriers when you think that, yes, my idea, I'm not able to express it or I'm not able to work on it or this idea seems to be difficult for me, okay? These are the certain things that comes into your mind when you start actually working on your idea. So believe me, you know, not to be a great thinker, a communication expert or a good writer for becoming an innovator. Okay, or and someone who can develop its product as per the user demand. So please remove this first barrier of expressing your ideas. Next is the question that comes or a barrier, which is a very biggest barrier. What we think is an idea or a product on which I want to work on. There are certainly many such a products available into the market already. Yes, this is the very biggest problem. You can see so many cars available of the so many industries, there are so many products available of the same kind, having the same applications, then certainly it is a barrier which steps you back when you are developing your idea or putting forth your uh, uh, inventive steps into it. 
but believe me it's not about what you make it's certainly not about what you make it's all about how you make with your fresh perspective or an inventive step yes it's all about how you make it and if you see many products okay in the same category it means there is a market and there are the certainly you ha already have the customers for your product already in hand so you can certainly go ahead in developing your product next a third is the fear of rejection what if my product would get failed what if my prototype is not good enough what if if i have designed this uh, you know as a step or as an element which i have added is not so user friendly or it's not effective you all all the time you carry that fear of rejection believe me it's there all the time it will be there all the time but believe in your idea whatever the product you are trying to make with its objectives in your mind and have the clear objectives and make it acceptable kind of it's a strategy okay and another important thing which students carry as a myth i would like to tell you we are placed into a semester wise pattern in an academic sessions okay so certainly you might be having the projects or working on certain projects which are having marks okay so the project you are always in a quest to get the first you know or the maximum marks for the product or the project that you are working on so you uh, or the student generally okay we all carry a quest to come up with a fantastic idea or a product okay we want to develop a product or a prototype or a something of that kind which the societies you know just now they are just waiting for our product aap kab bana rahe ho aur aa raha hai product okay so you all leave with that quest okay ki mujhe fantastic hi karna hai and i have to make you know a blockbuster or you know a masterpiece kind of a product but believe me please understand it's a process okay it's a process and don't let the perfect be the enemy of good you need not to be a perfectionist at the start try to develop a good product which is a requirement okay and that's a basic funda when you are process you know proceeding for your ideation till to your prototype development okay so moving ahead with this i'll just describe you what exactly uh, today in this talk we are going to explain so we all uh, have to understand an innovator or an entrepreneur journey it is not an originated kind of a thing you have to engineer it so systematically so that you can observe the benefits at the user hand okay accordingly so it has to be engineered so systematically what is required what is not required what is my next step to be you know to make the product a very user friendly or a cost effective or certain objectives to be defined accordingly so let me explain you this is nothing but a chain of the product okay a uh, product stages which i have explained on the slide this is generally called as technology readiness level that means from your idea till to the level it gets into the market what is the readiness level of your product or a prototype is there okay so from the first to first four are generally mainly oriented into the college environment or the campus environment university environments or generally these are called as a lab experiments that you do so in engineering also you might be having a labs a workshops or general laboratory where you develop certain kinds of the uh, engineer products and these are called as a lab products you have developed a one prototype or some one product you are generating proof of concepts accordingly based on your clear objectives that you have defined and it is called as a university environment whereas 5 and a 6 are called as a simulation and a prototyping stage okay it is a so very critical stage and it is in between of your university and industry environment that is from lab and the real world the major stage is the simulation and prototyping if you are feeling and a prototyping and your prototype is not as per the requirement of the real world you have to again come back to the lab again try to work on those 1 2 3 4 5, and then go and then again refine so this integral or the middle stage of simulation and prototype is very essential so it's not the technology ready it's i'm telling you it's all about are you ready to do it because there are so many stages involved and the refinement involved to make a product of a acceptable kind of okay 
So I have just given a glimpses of how the technology readiness level works and the gap between the university and the in, in your industry is nothing but your simulation and a prototyping. Okay. So university environment generally it is not so cost uh, costly. Uh, also, there is no time constraint. So I have just given an animation that a man is jumping, you know, slowly, slowly over the stones. Okay. However, simulation certainly demands a very rapid kind of a things concerning about your time, cost, and everything. Because you have to launch, once your prototype is ready, you have to go to the final end product. And once your prototype is ready, again, getting into the real world, it demands more faster approach. So if you are able to move so fast into the real world, you are able to achieve the success accordingly. So moving ahead, so guys, uh, it's not about your technology readiness level, or is it? it's not about your technology is ready, it's all about are you ready? Okay, so I assume that you all are ready to have your technology that is a user friendly or acceptable kind of. So let me give you something as a nothing but a general idea, okay, of the prototype. Prototype is nothing but a visual representation of anything. Okay, I in general in India we just say you know dikta hai wahi dikta hai. So it is nothing but a visual representation of anything. Whatever the idea or the product you want to develop, agar you have to make something of the visual of that kind. Either it might be an app, either it might be any physical product, or it is a, some part of a, some assembly or something. But it has to be a visually represented. In initial stages, it might not be a final end product which the user will use it continuously. But at the initial stages, it might be something as a crude prototype. It might be with, you know, not having a very uh, aesthetic appearance or not having any user-friendly appearance. But still, it is a workable kind of a uh, device or workable kind of a product based on your objectives that you have defined. So I have uh, given an image over here that people get an idea. Okay, we all get an idea, thousands of the ideas. And we try to work on those ideas and make something, okay? Based on what, are, what would be the final product elements involved in that product. That is called a prototyping stage. So I want this element to be in my final product. I want this aspect to be in my final product. Based on that, you will try to do, you know, piece by piece, you just do the summation of all those elements and make one device, one product of that kind. It is not actually a final end product, but yes, it is simulating the final end product. Once you are ready with this, a prototype with the elements and elements you have joined, you give it to your end users or your colleagues, family, friends, or someone who is in your contact, or you, are, or you will show it to your mentors or your colleagues and test it whether this product or a prototype is a worth of kind. I mean, based on your objectives whether it is satisfying your objectives, whether it is working as per the defined and clear objectives of your product. In the initial stages, it is not the aesthetic that matters. However, at the prototyping stages, when you go for a testing and a validation, your end users will give you a certain feedbacks on the final end product point of view. They will certainly suggest you the aesthetics. They will certainly suggest you certain problems associated with while handling your prototype and something. So you will learn and gain certain things, again ideate how you can resolve those challenges and again develop the prototype based on those you know, feedbacks received. You resolve those challenges. So this is a continuous cycle that goes on till your product comes into the market. How we are keeping into the mind one important thing when you develop a prototype. The two important aspect of the prototyping is you have to reduce the cost and as well as you have to look at the reducing the time as well. Because prototyping, if it will take the time of almost a one product from ideation till to the market, generally takes more than five years or 10 years or so. If your prototype is taking a more or equivalent of the uh, time of the product design or the final product designing, then there is no sense of prototyping as a stage. 
prototyping has to reduce the time of product development as well as it should reduce the cost of the product. So prototyping is a stage which is governing the lab environment as well as the real industry environment. Next, here I have just added, uh, you know, uh, certain types of the prototypes that you should uh, be looking at. But however, your criteria has to be to develop a low fidelity user prototypes, okay, where there not be a more complexity involved, as well as there are no, uh, as such, the design requirements are not so complex or high design requirements are not there. So low fidelity or the user prototypes are certainly the things which you can develop at a low cost, as well as with the, within some span of time. However, if as you complex the design or increase the designing elements to your prototype, the complexity of the design increases and simultaneously the scalability of your product based on this design is a challenging. Similarly, the prototype that you are developing should not have the technical complexities. I mean, when the user uses it, it should not have 10 options, you know, to open something which they want. As like one of the app, if we are handling like just a Google Meet, so one click and we are getting into the room. But if the, it is asking us 10 many questions while entering into the room, certainly there is a technical complexity. And certainly the user may not get into this and that's not a user-friendly kind of a thing. So try to develop a prototype which is simple and a user-friendly. From the start till now, I'm just focusing on a user-friendly things and a simplifying things because that's the main uh, basis or the genesis of your prototype development. Now, moving ahead with this is I would like to tell you as before moving for any prototype development, problem solving is so very critical, okay? Because you are developing a solution. You are solving some problems. So problem solving is approach is very, very critical before going for any development. So as rightly said by Dr. Albert Einstein, the formulation of the problem is often more essential than its solution. Yes, the formulation of the problem is often more essential than its solution. It's not that uh, he was so smart. It's just that he was staying with the problems for longer. So the prototype development is nothing but you have to stay longer with your problems and identify what exactly the niche area or the segment where I can press the point or what the point where I can add my USB or what the inventive step I can add on. So identify or understanding the problem at the beginning is so very essential. So now next slide that I have given is idea is not equal to Google. Yes, idea is not equal to Google or whatever the product or prototype you are developing is not equal to Google. So what exactly the Google gives you? Google gives you what has been done. Yes, Google gives you what has been done already or what are the products or the prototypes already available into the market? That's a Google. However, your idea is not that. So what based on what has been done, what to be done is your idea. So that what to be done is nothing but an essential element of your design, essential element of your prototype development. Next, collection and connection. This point, I just want to here is an uh, animated GIF uh, that I have given. A man has many points, okay, with it, the balls that he's just handling. Okay, there are so many points that you have collected with your ideas. My idea has to be this. My idea will work like this. It will look like this. It. Uh, these are my customers or these are the end users of this idea. I will make this product from uh, this, this company or these are my resource people. Likewise, these are all points that you have. Okay, the man is already having this point. What actually happens is, as we work on one point, certainly with that one point, we also have 10 more points or the 10 sub points associated. So as in the next image, you can see there are so many points that are coming up. Okay, but connecting those points is very critical in this step. Whatever the points, because once you get into one point, there are sub points and there are so many mini, nano and pico level kind of a points that you will certainly think of. 
but my main funda here is what is your clear defined objective based on that try to collect only those points and connect those points which are desired at the start just don't go in so much thinking process and you know you will land up making something which people don't want so don't try to waste your time and even the resources in thinking so much about your this thing of you know collecting so many points what is your idea or the clear objective when you started working on this project or started working solving on solving this problem so just have those clear objectives and then connect those points accordingly so anything in this uh, slide i just want to sum up as you have to collecting point dots plus connecting dot is equal to creativity or an idea people just try and collecting the things they just try and connect collecting and land up land up you know connecting those points which are not desired so you have to collect essential points and connect only those essential points to show people the creativity or an idea with a your clear objective of performance next i'll just give you an idea is not equal to business idea yes any product or prototype or anything that we develop it should have a business okay it should have a business so any idea we all get an idea in a day we get more than we have almost 86000 seconds per day so every second we all have an idea right so all these ideas are not equal to business idea and believe me whatever you are developing build the things which people love yes this is the basic funda that build the things which people love we all get an idea the basic example but when your idea finds a market when your idea finds a customers when your idea finds a need it is called as business idea yes it is called as business idea so your user or your market is very essential when you develop any product or prototype so prototyping or a simulation is not uh, actually the thing which you have developed just it is nothing but more into the performance validation and how your users or your customers will react to your product when they will use it when they will handle it so this is all about build the things which people love now with this i would like to give you an example of a freshness burger shop okay this is a shop in a japan okay they have lot of uh, shops all across the japan and they have come up with a business idea i would like to tell you guys how they have come up with their idea a product or a prototype and how inventive it was how simple user friendly it was okay so i'll just play a video and understand the problem the solution and how they have developed the product so in this video you all can see the freshness burgers have all the variety of burgers okay they they are offering so many burgers but still they are not able to make the business the reason is in ancient uh, japanese people or in current they follow a small lips called as ochibu okay it is nothing but their cultural uh, context and uh, beautification factor that the female has to follow but that is the maintenance of a small lips okay and it hinders them from opening the mouth in the society okay so i'll just uh, play a video in further uh, this thing so it hinders the female from opening the mouth even they can't smile so effectively and with the open mouth if you could see the at the freshness burger shops the male colleagues are able to eat the burger the way they want but the female colleagues are not able to eat the burger due to this ochibu factor and freshness burger is divide of getting you know the 50% of the customer that is 50% of the japanese population is divide of eating their burgers yes they are not able to eat their burgers so how you can allow a uh, females to eat the burgers without spelling their ochibu how you can allow a female japanese females without opening their mouth or spelling their mouth okay spoiling their ochibu a cultural thing and allow them to eat the burger because 50% of the freshness burger population is divide of eating the burger 
So what could be the product, a solution for this? Yes, how they could have think for getting into, you know, that freshness burger uh, because they are not getting the cell the way they want. So what's the solution? Can they isolate the females in a separate uh, room and allow them to eat the burger? Yes, can be. Can they hire a very big PR team, you know, so that uh, in that way, that PR strategy or marketing strategy would work? Or they can have the cutting the pieces of burgers and allow them to eat. Yes. Burger ka maza khane mein burger pura ho to hi hai. Okay, there is no any maza when you have the cuttings of the burger or the pieces of the burgers. Okay. And that also needs the, you know, extra efforts from the freshness burger. And isolating female, again, you are, uh, you know, doing injustice to them. So how you can come up with a solution which would be a justice and also female would be a happy. So let's get into a solution what the freshness burger has come up. So yes, so the solution is nothing but a liberation wrapper. Isn't it a very simple solution? This liberation wrapper allows the female customers to eat the burger by, by opening their mouths behind this liberation wrapper. And also they are sharing the table alongside of their male colleagues. And the result is the happiness index of the female colleagues was increased so tremendously that increased the sale of freshness burger by 213%. Yes. And the idea was just spread all across the social media and into the public and news that it came up that they have adopted such a simple solution and made female free from the spell of Ochibu. Yes. So how you guys felt about this solution? It is so very simple. No much costly, no isolation rooms, neither cutting the burgers, but they have just come up with a wrapper to be covered and female customers can eat the burger and it also increased their sell. This is also a type of a product or a prototype. Nothing but an idea has to be very simple and it should be thought from all the angles. Okay. So moving ahead after the freshness burger example of idea or a prototype, I would like to tell you all one important thing. Everyone can idea it. Yes but not every idea is innovative for the market. And there is a difference between innovation and invention. Innovation is not at all equal to invention. When anything which we develop as a new process or a new product or something which we develop, it is called as invention. But when your invention finds a business or a people, those who can buy that invention or it is useful by the customers, it is certainly called as innovation. Okay, so innovation and inventions are completely different. Now let's come up with an, another example of prototype development or a product development. It is nothing but a smart watch. Okay, a person has developed from one of the universities in um, China and he has come up with a solution of this wrist watch. Okay, and the USP of this watch is it is a smart watch operation using wrist gestures. As the someone moves its wrist, the, there is a movement or there are the certain things the apps get open uh, in the smartwatch. The solution was adopted uh, because to, you know, when we use a smartwatch, again, we have to handle it just like the phone that we handle, okay, the mobile phone we handle. So in this case, he has developed a solution, which is you need not to touch the smartwatch. You just have to move your wrists. So you can see what are the problems when we use the current smartwatches. We again have to use them with the hands and even with the fingers. And it is very difficult. However, the person has come up with the wrist movements and that will operate your smartwatch. So these are the movements that he has adopted. And these are nothing but a motion sensing sensors that he has put it into it in its prototype. So this is a prototype that is a lot with the wires sensors and all that stuff. This is the initial prototype that he's, he has developed. He has attached piezo sensors, the proximity sensors, all that screen and everything. It is just with the uh, stitches, the stickers and everything he has made. 
and the he's demonstrating us how it actually works so this is called as a crude prototype okay or an ugly prototype however it is not just the user friendly prototype but yes it is working as per his objectives of moving the wrist and getting the uh, uh you know the action of the wrist watch so you can see that he is moving it and he is also validating the performance now the application he has developed that he can just draw some you know icons with the wrist movements and get into certain things likewise you can see he has drawn and rectangle accordingly and going into the calls then also he can just switching across the audios likewise with the wrist movements and play accordingly whichever he wants and also he is zooming in and zooming out the things as per the requirement without touching it just with the wrist movements so in this uh, thing he has adopted the certain things and the elements even this he has also proved with the game inputs you can also play a game with this wrist watch uh, assembly the way he has developed the prototype how you you can now see all these elements are continuously attached linked and there are so many wires the sensors also it is operated through some batteries and everything he has just attached and put it on the things once the prototype is ready the person is also validating it as per the user response how the user can respond to its developed prototype so he is analyzing all the gestures the movements of the people with this cameras and everything and he's noticing every beat and a piece of the things that people are reacting when they use their when they use his prototype so likewise this wrist uh, gesture based uh, smart watch the person has developed how it is not a final end product which is ready to be dispatched or given to the customers but the initial thing is he has just added those elements which are required based on zooming zoom out that element was there then a uh, wrist gestures need to be moved and to be added and finally he has just done the game and put into the device however the design was very crude it was not a final things but the basic funda of the prototyping is it should work or demonstrate or simulate the real world picture of your product so i hope you guys have understood how exactly the prototyping is all about now let me explain you all one of my product and uh, which i have designed and how i have gone through a prototype development so you can see at the left hand side there is one vessel and that vessel there is a shaft and i have drawn it is like a paper design you have to always start your design or an idea on a paper just draw it what exactly you are thinking about so it is a vessel in which this rotating shaft is there and below that i have attached one spring box okay this is my product however this was the initial stage when i have started thinking about this idea so i have to attach one spring box at the uh, at this paddle and this paddle will rotate in a vessel which is filled with the fluids the main objective and the performance uh, requirement for the spring box was it is filled with a certain uh, pharmaceutical products which we generally filled it into it and they should get equally distributed from top and a bottom okay into the and the fluid will came in contact with it accordingly later once i have just have a paper design and a drawing i have moved on to the actual uh, product visualization with some of the jugaad kind of a things i took some clips some papers or something whatever available to me and i have attached to the paddle and put it into a vessel you can see at the right hand side into the image that the vessel filled with the fluid and the spring box visualization however in this i have just have a, had a paper clips you can see these are the paper clips only that i have attached and there is some paper and some sheets is placed in between and some tines were there with the thread and this was just a visualization of product how exactly it will work later on based on this requirements of failures and attempts i have just noted down that what would be if the design is like this what would be the distance what would be the speed of the paddle and the design will work in that 
So all these error analysis was done based on this product visualization and trial and errors with the available things to me. Okay. And after based on that, I actually moved on to a 3D designing and printing. In this 3D designing and printing as well, when I started designing this assembly, I have to give each and every dimension so critically so that it will hold the system. It will also allow the rotation into the system properly. And the material that I will use for this, it will be stable into the water for longer durations. And now I can show you the final prototype when I've developed how exactly it is simulating into the vessel. Yes, it is moving and giving me the performance as per the requirements. So you have to start starting from the paper designing, then having something to be attached as initial stuffs available next to you immediately in your colleague laboratories or at your uh, families, at your friends, or at from many other places. You have to just join those elements as per your thinking. Put it into the real uh, environment or the, into the simulation conditions and try and observe what are the errors you are able to notice. It. And then these errors you have to solve and add as in your design elements, which are very critical when you design any product. So accordingly, I have also designed, moved on to the 3D designing and printing and developed a prototype, which is actually giving me a real world picture and a simulating performance. So with this, there are certain guidelines that I would like to give you when you go for prototype or any process design generation. This is nothing but a press model, which I have, which I always apply to any idea or any product which I'm going to develop. So this is a press model. In this P, press, actually P stands for a problem. R stands for the revenue model. E stands for the entry barrier. S stands for the size of the market. And another S, it stands for scalability. Let me explain you why this press model is very essential when you are at an ideation or developing a prototype stage. If you are not satisfying press model, believe me, you will not move beyond prototyping stage or you will not even achieve the prototyping stage. Let me explain you why. The problem is so essential as I have already mentioned why the problem is so essential. If you are solving someone's problem, is your product or idea is a solution to a real life problem or a problem which is on which is which have arrived from among so many people then certainly you can go ahead with the prototyping or designing that solution or an idea second important thing that you have to consider always whatever you are designing whatever the product you are making it should give you a revenue in return if you are not able to make the money out of that developed device or a product, it is not moving ahead of prototyping development because industry or the real world demands a revenue and return out of your prototype or the product developed product. So you have to always consider that you will definitely generate a revenue from your developed product. E stands for entry barrier. This is a very critical, important thing as an entry barrier. Well, how you will stop others from copying your idea or how you will stop others from developing similar kind of a product. How you will establish that barrier, that entry barrier for others. It is very important. You will either make a patent filing or design patent filing or anything that you will take as an action to protect your product or your prototype. So this entry barrier needs to be so strong to survive and, you know, to get into the real world, actually. The size of the market. Are you making this product for a one person? People generally will ask you, are you making a product for a one person? Are you making a product for 100 people? Are you making a product for 1,000 uh, people? Are you making a product for millions of population? Are you making a product for billions of population? as the size of the market increases the need of your prototype or the requirement of your design is very important okay it becomes so important for the population so if you have a good size of the market you can go ahead with the so many experimentations of the prototype as well as designing of your product 
another important thing whatever you will develop whatever the prototype you will develop please make it into a mine at the start it should be scalable enough it should be scalable enough the piece that you have developed at a lab it is just a one piece or it is a one piece called as a prototype it is a proof of concept or a minimum viable product that you have developed it is a one one piece only but what if you have to serve the thousand pop, thousand people what if you have to serve million people so is your device product or prototype can be scaled to that level easily if yes then yes your prototype product design what to be into the market but if not then there are certainly the challenges to launch such a product and it will remain at a prototype stage only so always remember this press model when you try to develop a product now moving ahead i would like to give you how to have a uh, analyze the press let's think i have given one idea over here it is a wedding gifts platform okay this is a wedding gift platform and an idea that i'm telling you why this idea is let's analyze the problem first of all as a press model so we all attend the weddings we all go to the weddings in our families friends colleagues we all attend the weddings the major problem with the wedding is the couple gets unwanted wedding gifts yes the couple gets unwanted wedding gifts and the major problem they gets a multiple uh, you know they get the same gifts from the multiple guests that is again a challenge so to solve this problem okay the team of a people come up with a solution okay they have de developed a wedding gift platform it is an online platform or an app kind of a thing where couple puts the desired gifts okay they are placing their desired gifts which they want and link for the gift registration uh, is given to a card or an mail attachment and it is given to uh, the guest the guest will select uh, the listed gifts uh, after clicking or going to that uh, link and buy from the wedding gift platform okay so this is the thing that they have developed so you have to go click on that uh, link buy the wedding gift and the gift will get delivered at the couple doorstep at the desired time and a date which they have mentioned on the platform however this concept is very popular in western countries but uncommon in india yes so how this solution or the idea will work actually into the real world let us understand what will stop amazon and flipkart from entering into the same business and i have also given on the slide a picture of a big dog versus small dog the ideas or the solutions are coming from the youth are nothing but a small dog representation but the someone who is actually into the business or developing a products of such a kind offering a service of certain kind is like a amazon or a flipkart so what will stop amazon and flipkart from entering into the same business let me tell you the advantages that are associated with amazon and flipkart with their services they have huge customer database which the young uh, newly made developed wedding gift platform does not have they certainly offer the huge discounts on every product they have the tie ups with all the vendors and even they are delivering your gifts at the doorstep now the idea or the solution you all will notice is the only online platform which they have developed where the couple have to place their desired gifts yes it is the idea and a solution which amazon and flipkart is not offering okay now let me give you when you think for an any idea or a solution or a process or a design the important aspect your friends and family members okay they all are so smart okay they may select the gift from the list whichever is mentioned on the wedding gift platform and they will order it from amazon into the discounted rates yes so what is the use of this idea into the real world then it is just to select the gifts that a couple have uh, you know placed on that on their pl platform so in this case there is no entry barrier they are not able to establish uh, you know or they are not able to stop others from copying their ideas or entering into the same business and that's the very essential things which we all have to think from the start while we are going for anything 
as a prototype or a process or designing development, how your users will react to it and how other competitors will react to your product or a process. However, how this problem can be resolved then? Now they have to develop the wedding gift platform and they have to also survive. So how this problem could get solved? Now they don't have the entry barrier. How they can still sustain into the market? So in this case, sustaining into the market is the only choice they have is tying up or having a collaboration with the big daddies into the market. So that certain this tire will help them facilitate to run their business. So that couple will put it uh, the uh, place the gifts uh, desired gifts on their platform. They'll select and the link to buy those gifts is uh, you know directing the customers to the Amazon or Flipkart accordingly. And whatever the gifts would be you know purchased through that platform, Amazon and Flipkart will offer them certain revenue or certain percentage in return. And that is the only choice remain in this case. So moving ahead with this, I would like to give you certain important points to be considered before designing or going for your idea or a process or a product. List out all the activities that are important in your product. Okay, in your product process, list out all the important activities. Even anything which is not even desired, just list it out on the paper all the activities once you have listed out try to arrange them in a flow of activities i want this activity first i want that activity later likewise represent it in a flow format and also have some time lapse videos for assessment when you have this idea first then what if another idea comes this is called time lapse video assessment people generally do apply this while performing their process development or prototyping stages. They add all those elements one by one and observe it through a video lapse, time lapse videos. Second, they give it to their uh, end users or the customers which for them which they have made it and they analyze the character profiles. You should analyze the character profile, generally the behavior of your consumers or the customer and what is their lifestyle because all these affect your prototyping and product performance. List and summarize all the inputs that you have gathered. List all and summarize all those inputs. Based on that, analyze the error, where the products will get failed, where the products will get improved. All these error analysis you have to do. Also, the most important is you need to have a long range forecast. That is, if the anything that might uh, influence people's behavior over the period of time about your product. Okay, that also you need to think after the period of time, what the people perception or their behavior towards my product is. So that once you are tackling that situation or the challenge at the initial stages, you will survive into the market. There is another one important aspect is noticing users entire day activity. That is very important when you have given a product to a consumer or your friends or family, notice their entire day, how they react to your product or a prototype. Draw and ask them to draw their experience. It is not just to take or collect the uh, question and answer kind of a thing. Ask them to draw what is what was their experience when they was using it. Just draw it. And also when they are, you know, uh, testing your device or prototype, have the camera uh, placed in between or ask them to share your views uh, when the camera is there. That is camera with experience need to be noticed or remembered, which will certainly help you in developing your prototype or the process. You need to give your product to a familiar person with the technology or unfamiliar as well, because majority of your mentors, guides, supervisors are familiar with your technologies, right? So these are the familiar population. So you have to give your prototype to your familiar population. And also the people, those who are not familiar with your technology or anything. So unfamiliar population and observe and draw the uh, things from their experience. Okay, what is their, uh, you know, feedback for your product. And most importantly, before developing anything, be your own customer. Be your own customer and criticize your product as much as possible. Or also try it yourself and feel how it feels to you. Okay, don't be biased, but 
try to feel how the product has to be. Go to the customer side and not to the technology developer or the innovator side. Go to the customer side. That is the most important aspect when you are developing a prototype. So I have given one important thing that is called innovation design engineering organization methods, IDO, where they have given, you know, a practicing and aspiring designers certain guidelines. Okay, when they they want to develop anything which is very innovative and creative, they have to follow all these method cards. So this link has been given. You can go and read through this in a very stepwise manner. They have given how one can, you know, uh, develop certain creative things with the designs. Certain do's and don'ts at the last that I would like to tell you guys is very important. Do's. You need to do your homework well. This There is no any option for this. You have to do your homework well. Realize the product need. If there is no need and, you know, the need as per the customer need to be there in your prototype and your design. Try to make very elegant and user friendly prototype. Look at simplifying the problems and not complexing the problems. Your customer or end user should not struggle much in, you know, using your device or a product and build an open environment and get the maximum of all the people associated to you. You know, try and interact with the people as much as possible. Try to build a strong team and realize the strength of your team is very essential. And don't, don't be hypothetical. Poor market research will not help you out. Poor and ugly prototype, it's not your criteria. You always have to think for a very user-friendly and elegant prototype from the start itself. Don't make the ugly prototype. And don't fall in love with your idea, okay? Because I have one thing, people fall in love with uh, ideas and they do de develop something else. Okay, unko banana tha. Matlab, the phrase is like, jana tha Japan and pohaj gaye chin. Samaj gaye na, yane yane, pyar ho gaya. So don't fall in love with your product. So you will, you know, lose your objectives. Try to explore the products, try to discuss with the people so that they can give you the inputs as much as possible. Not realizing your team strength or your team member strength will be a biggest failure, biggest failure in your product development. Because here, uh, my team would be my kaka, mama, and my uncle, my aunt, my that best friend will not certainly help you out. In your team, the person has to add the skill sets accordingly and will help you out to develop the product. So these are the five steps to take it ahead. At the last is, Choose the right niche, area, and segment. That is nothing but an idea stage. Second, you need to always compare the available techniques and the products which are already there into the market or are in line with the same thought or a process. So your prototyping is completely based on the value additions that you want to add on to the already existing products with respect to cost, ease, and scalability, et cetera, et cetera. So many things and develop a proof of concept and prototype and business model accordingly. And finally validate the performance of that developed product. Believe me, it's all about adventurous journey. So you should do your homework well before starting this journey. If you fail to do so, you will face the obstacles accordingly. So now at the last, I am coming to my journey. I'll just sharing you within a few slides what I have done what I have been through and what I am into. So I have come up initially with the one product called Pregvidate. It is nothing but a on-farm super simple. It is early urine pregnancy diagnosis in cattle, okay, cows and buffaloes using their urine sample, how they can early determine the pregnancy into the cattle. And this is my product, okay. It is a urine-based simple rapid and early pregnancy detection kit in cows. You have to just take a sample of a urine and add the reagents and it develops an instant color. A deep wine red indicates your cattle is pregnant and no development of a color or a light shade of up to orange shade. Okay, a clear orange shade is, indicates a non-pregnant. And the USP of this product, it detects a pregnancy within 18 days of conception, which is the first of its kind and a very visual kind of a kid which we have developed or come, up, come ahead with it. So this product uh, I have developed as a proof of concept at the national level contest of Institution Innovation Council and have been awarded as a first prize at the hands of 
you know, MHRD ministers and the state ministers at the Innovation Festival of MIC. Similarly, I also received a chance to interact with the, uh, you know, dignitaries at the exhibition and the boot camp. However, this winning was not just limited to a winning. It has moved on to a, another opportunity. I soon received an opportunity for India-South Korea Startup Exchange Program, where I have learned certain things required for a product development, designing, as well as how to go ahead with a startup. And simultaneously, I received an opportunity to present and exhibit my product or an idea at the Global Innovator Festa in South Korea. And my product got selected amongst 100 startups all across the world. So initially, uh, I moved to the Korea and I have learned certain things from the global commercialization workshop. So certainly we all can make certain products, prototypes, which certainly we feel that they are, you know, they are having that capacity that this can, you know, dazzle on the global market and they hold the potential to be commercialized globally. So this is the organization which works towards the, you know, making the uh, products globally commercializable. And they are telling us what is important when you want to go for a commercialization globally. Then I have also visited certain organizations. These are nothing but the incubation centers or accelerators. At the left hand side is the Electronic Center Telecommunication Research Institute, Itri Dejeon. And you can see the laboratories, the 3D printers and everything they're offering to the people. And believe me here, the school age children are also making the products and developing their prototypes. Another at the right hand side is a Kim Young University. And there is a list of startups or the products that has been developed at their, you know, uh, facility. Next is nothing but a global innovator festa where I have participated and I got the product mention amongst top 100 startups all across the world. Even I received a chance to exhibit and present in front of the dignitaries uh, in this global innovator festa. And I also received a Korean collaboration through this initiative. Another is the CCEI they do and their startup ecosystem. At the left hand side, you can see there are 96 successful startups that CCEI has supported and majority of them are from 11, 12 standard students till to the graduation and PhDs. I have also received uh, learnings from a global communication expert and coach for investor pitching that is Juliana Lee and partners. So I just want to highlight one important thing over here. As Juliana said, you need to highlight the pain points because people or the society is sensitive towards their pain points and how your solution or idea is resolving those pain points. People will certainly get attracted to that thing. So moving ahead, uh, this completion of startup India Startup Exchange Program and I have received the completion certificate at the hands of President CCA Degu. And finally, I came after that into the news, media, and channels. Uh, uh, and also, I presented this idea at the ICT MHRD cell in front of all the industry people and uh, the big uh, authorities. And I have been nominated as an innovation ambassador for my all the achievements all throughout. Moving ahead, currently Pregvidate uh, is in a stage of commercialization. I would like to tell you that we have completed all of our trials and also we have a team of 25 doctors all across the nation and they're supporting and promoting Pregvidate to a greater extent. We are also conducting our trials at a big dairy farms, on a cattle farms, and also we are sending samples across South Korea. So the journey has started with the proof of concept and uh, the incubation grant with which I also incubated at Riddle uh, KJ Somaya Mumbai. Now, I currently have the feedback for my product called as testimonials for the product. When you get those products from a various eminent veterinary doctors, which says that it is a fantastic product, a breakthrough, a milestone, and people are ready to support it to a greater extent. So it is nothing but a worth to, you know, get the feedback on your product or a prototype which you have developed. So these are certain achievements for uh, my innovation from entrepreneurial journey earlier, which I have won many uh, entrepreneurship business and other innovative contests. I came in news and media at many a times. So this was my innovator come entrepreneurial journey. 
and uh, yes i have established a company called amcron technologies private limited so here we are offering a point of care diagnostic uh, kits mainly for the veterinary purpose and i have three products in this line one of which i have already mentioned is a pregvidate and other two are calcium and phosphorus detection kits so this is uh, the mainly for a point of care diagnostics for the veterinary uh, purpose and being an iic's innovation ambassador ambassador we believe in togetherness okay so we all have to innovate and simultaneously educate each other and expand this culture of innovation together so thank you uh, csi crc and fr crc e for calling me uh, and inviting me ashwini paranspe ma'am for inviting and all the participants those who are attending this session thank you so much guys if you have any questions you can ask so so sir uh, i have a question yes raj when market is changing so rapidly uh, mm -hmm. how to be so firm that my idea will work somehow like how to be so sure uh okay i'll explain it uh, to you with my own example okay i have developed the pregvidate kit okay you have seen it's a visual color test only right yes now it's actually into the real environment and people are using it but suddenly i start at one point where someone has asked me that what if uh, if the person is color blind what if if he is not able to judge what is the performance of the product so can you develop something which can analyze a product on farm okay so i am in a process to develop something which can give in digits or an app which can you know transfer the readings of the uh, developed uh, thing on their mobile so that they can see whether it is pregnant or not in terms of a readings so this is like a ever changing process and it's your users it's your end customers gives you a feedback what they want and you will try to adapt accordingly let me give you an example of android versions if they will uh, launch a perfect fine android at the initial stage will they survive into the market for longer yes will they survive into the market for longer what is the usp of the android phones actually is is the uniqueness or the new things or the novelties that they are adding continuously it makes their users or end customers you know curious about what's coming next what's coming next and that's coming next people are remain attached to your product for longer and buy that product so this is the thing which is continuously changing but yes you have to adapt according to the requirements and you have to make the changes in your product accordingly thank you i guess in chat box there was one question came in uh, raj can you please uh, tell me what was yeah. that uh, how long does it take from getting an idea to developing a prototype okay so generally uh, based on the idea and the complexity of the idea involved in so if the idea that you want to work on as you know for a let's see it is just an app or something a cloud based thing or a device so initially from the idea the idea generally comes from your customers or it is an idea which you have observed or it is an idea when you go to a real situations and you get the you know sense that yes there is a problem and i would like to solve that problem so this idea when you notice and realize you start working on it however the initial stages are trial and error kind of and to get the actual or the proof of concept something in your hand it is based on the complexity of the idea and the solution that you are trying to solve that's why i have said ki try to adopt the simple strategies so that it will certainly reduce your time and as well the cost involvement the resource involvement the people involvement would be minimum so think from the start that how you can reduce let me tell you i have developed the pregvidate in a one and half year but from that one and half year from prototyping till launching on giving to my end customers was a very big period almost more than two and a half years i have to put for that so if you are initially 
so late into the market believe me how much delay would be there for you to reach to your actual customers and get the revenue out of it so try to minimize that time span whatever is the product develop it let's not assume it's a 100% product it be a 50% performance mention at the uh, prototyping stage or the end user stage that my product is 50% performing or its performance is this much only and you are trying you are in a continuous process of developing for that then later you will definitely come up with uh, you know 70% performance excellence and then certainly slowly slowly you will achieve the 100% but you have to launch when you are at least a 50% get into it and give you a product that yes this is what i am making let people and customers to make aware that you are developing something which is their need so this is a process but time is very critical in this stage and prototyping uh, the main aim of it is to reduce the time so you have to adopt certain simpler strategies to you reduce the time and have the rapid prototyping done so uh raj is there any question i guess in message box we received yes i guess uh, uh what after developing a prototype i think she asked during you were as answering okay. the question yes. so as i mentioned prototype is nothing but the product which is performing as per the defined objectives or it is simulating the real end product situation it is having the final end product elements which you want that the product should perform but it is not yet the final product after prototyping there are two stages majorly involved actually these are three stages but two stages majorly involved involved is the small scale validation and another is the large scale validation validation is whether your product is performing as per requirement okay that means as per the defined requirements so small scale validation is nothing but certain laboratory reports certain validation certain certifications that you need or some group of population you know or a team of population is you know confirming whether your product is performing as per the requirement or not it is called as a small scale validation and large scale validation is nothing but you will give the product actually into the real situation or to your end customers in my case my end customers were veterinary doctors and farmers so i gave my product to them and i told them kindly give us a give me a feedback so in my case i have collected almost more than thousands of the data or the thousands of the feedback that is called large scale validation how your the small scale validation would be just 100 uh, 100 people have given me a data or 200 people have given me a data likewise so once you have established a large enough data or a large scale validation is already done you are ready to launch your product into the market based on that if someone is not agreeing or not satisfied with your product again you have to refine your product or a prototype okay it is a percentage wise if let's say only 5% people are not agreeing but rest 95% people are saying you go ahead it's a very nice product yes you can go and launch the product but if the 50 50 is there then again you have to think on your product because you need not to lose those 50% of the people into the market so it is all about the uh, given uh, process i mean it is all about the process that you need to think for even uh, so in sir, case, uh, uh, in uh, just uh, let me tell even in case of the scalability i just want to tell you as i have mentioned ki uh, if you want right now you are making prototype as a one piece only i mean or it is just a one device or a one vehicle or something as a one uh, thing one unique thing only but what if the thousand people need it can you able to scale it to that level so that small scalability as mean let's see 50 pieces 100 pieces you are able to make it and you have to assess based on that how much time is required to make the 50 pieces and accordingly what would be the time for a large scale so all these things need to be assessed after prototyping there's another question Uh, what is the support given for a good prototype support in terms of what funding are you asking about or in terms of uh, anything uh, uh, i mean creative inputs or anything let me tell you all the aspects first of all an idea stage is nothing but a 
we called as a technology development stage, which we develop at our institute, our lab, or at our family, friends, or anything, the space which is available to us. And this stage is nothing but an ideation stage. Here, you don't demand a much money. Okay, here you don't demand a much money because you are in a thinking process and you are not in an execution process. As soon as you finalize, this is the idea and this is which I want to work on. You will try to arrange something to make the product. And the arranging something is nothing but jugard. Okay, you will go and ask to someone, a friend or a family, give me this thing, I will, I need it. Or you will get, collect the things from someone and you try and compile the things and make it in a one assembly. This is a jugard kind of a thing that you will make. However, it is not also a costly thing. It is hardly almost a thousands or 10,000 max. But making it from that proof of concept or just an ideation to the prototype, it is based on complexity of your idea or complexity of your prototype. You have to invest the amount or you need the funding. However, for prototyping, there are so many fundings available already. You can go to the Startup India. You can also ask for certain engineering organizations, engine investors. Also, you are alumni, your friends, friends and family members can also fund you to a some extent, but certainly not above one lakh rupees. You have to develop anything within that so that it would be considered as a at least a developed proof of concept kind of. And prototyping, if it is a very heavy kind of a prototype, you need to write a project or a proposal to a governing body or someone as an investor who is interested to support or fund your idea or a prototype. Certainly, there are so many options available. You will certainly get the funding based on whether that product has a market. Because your investor or the funding body will certainly ask you who will be the customer for this and whether they will get the returns out of it or they will earn the money out of it. If yes, then you will definitely get the funding accordingly. But if not, then they will think of, yes, we can give up to some percentage to you and you try and develop something and then come back to us for the another round of funding. Likewise, so the funding goes in a stages, but till coming to the prototype stage, it should not have more than one lakh rupees at the initial stages. But if it is going beyond that, you need to approach to the funding bodies and get the funds. Also, at the initial stages, you might need or we, the students generally need the mentoring. We need the training. We need the guidance. And we need the mentors, those who are actually established in that field. So you need to go and seek the guidance from a people. You have to write a mail or even your university or institute can arrange certain people, those who can act as a mentors to your project or your prototype development. So through their expertise, through their contacts, you are able to you know, speed up the prototyping process. So all these factors are there already available. And for students, there are so many options available right now. So you can certainly go ahead with it. So yes, Raj. Uh, uh, so there is another question uh, from Sakshi Shetty. If money is the hindrance while developing a prototype, how should we go about it? Money is what? hindrance like it's an obstacle for, for students or something uh generally i'm uh, let me tell you for the students generally the money factor i'm telling you is the biggest factor for a money involved is a laboratory laboratory space okay and the resources which you already have at your institution your institute is offering you so the basic fundamentally the space the developing space, the idea that you create, and the basic resources your institution is already offering you. So you need not to bother about the money as a challenge at the initial stages. Similarly, your mentors, teachers, and alumni are willing to support you to a certain extent. Okay, and there certainly there are the ways to you know minimize the money. How one can go ahead with it. Even you can get some, you know, money from your friends, families and ask people, OK, can you please fund me for some time or for this project or something? People can certainly fund you. But I told you the amount should not go beyond one lakh. If it is within one lakh, you can arrange from people or the people, those who are uh, near to you. But uh, you cannot go beyond one lakh at the initial stages. 
even certain competitions are you know uh, giving you an award money in, in lakhs rupees or certain engineering competitions are there where you can present your ideas or you are just a design kind of a prototypes they also uh, uh, play you, um, i mean pay you almost 50000 as a cash amount to each participant or even in lakhs these amounts these days are going so i mean for the students there are so many opportunities available you need to just keep on track grab those opportunities and go ahead with it i think uh, there is no further questions so i okay. proceed for the vote of thanks thank you it is my privilege to give the vote of thanks on this occasion on behalf of csi frcrc would like to thank mr amit lokande for making this webinar a success i am sure that this advices and techniques will be very useful to us i would like to thank ashwini ma'am our council in charge for her guidance in conducting our event participants please fill the feedback form circulated in order to get the participation certificates thank you sir thank you everyone thank you thank you so much thank you so much amit sir it was a wonderful uh, session by you and your experience really uh, will help students and even i got to know so many things today from you thank you so much ashwini ma'am thank you thanks a lot sir thank you thank you so much thank you so much all the participants for attending thank you